very much for everybody for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Sean Doherty. I'm the director of the Wallingford Family YMCA. Yeah, Louise Hazelwood, health director for the town of Wallingford. You take center stage there. We're co-chairs. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk to you about the uh, Wallingford Healthy Wallingford Improvement Plan 2020. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Eloise to get us started. And uh, we have some question and answer at the end, but please, uh, we want this to be an engaging uh, start to all of this work. This is actually a CDC initiative which started from Healthy People 2000, which has now evolved to Healthy People 2020. The federal government sets, sets up uh, objectives and goals for health improvement. And then the states, in turn, look at the overall large plan, say, what areas of improvement do we need? The state health improvement plan focused on areas. So we looked at the wheels of this ship and decided that we were going to focus on those same areas here in Wallingford and listed are those seven priority areas. We've been meeting since September of 2014 with our community partners concerning the focus areas. And each individual person at that table represents a different group and a different sector. So everybody comes at it from a different perspective of their interest. And that's good, because that's really what we need. We need a coalition, because this is a very large undertaking and we can't do it alone. So we need community partners, and we need people who have different focus areas so that we can spread that expertise out among the different areas. The actual plan is 57 pages long. However, there is a link that is available which gives you the current uh, objectives under each one of those focus areas. It is a living document. It's meant to be a living document. So as indi more individuals get involved, hopefully, um, we'll address more of those, more areas under each of those priorities. So, and as improvements are made, we'll also update our plan. This is a long-term plan. This is not something that we expect to be done within a year. It is a 10-year plan, long-term vision for health improvement of the community. And it's integrated to give measurable outcomes. And in order to have measurable outcomes, we have to have some baseline data. What is it that we're dealing with? So we actually looked at state baseline data for population health, and um, we collectively decided that we would use state data as opposed to New Haven County data, because we more mirror the state in, in whole. We also looked at the results from the behavioral youth survey, as far as some of the things that we want to address in our focus areas. We also looked at our uh, EMS data for calls, what's happening uh, specifically in Wallingford. And our goal is to update this plan and every year give an overall as to what we've done so far for programs, policies to address some of those areas. We also know that there are community partners out there who have additional data that we don't have. So that's part of this public announcement is to say, help us reach out, share what you have. The mission statement that we have um, is to activate and promote healthy living to promote the overall quality of life for everyone in Wallingford. And this kind of started off from our Activate Wallingford work, work and our uh, Pioneering Health, Healthier Communities work. Pioneering Healthier Communities was a Robert Wood Johnson uh, initiative back in 2009. Uh, they started about 2006, 2007. Is they saw an, uh, an uptick in um, youth obesity, a significant up uptick in uh, youth obesity, where to the point where kids that are born today are going to live less than we are, which is a scary sight. I have two uh, two kids, and I want to see them living way beyond my years. So um, youth obesity was a big, formal, uh, big focus point for the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. They laid, laid out some funding for community-wide efforts. We applied uh, as the YMCA in uh, 2009, we were accepted. It's a team-wide approach. It is not to run programs or services or anything of that nature. It is to focus on environmental change, and that's very tough. Um, we're used to running programs. The Y at a lot of different agencies and organizations are used to running programs. We do it well. Uh, some, some, do, uh, some do well, some do not do well. We do uh, surveys, all that kind of good stuff. But this was something different. This was environmental change. And that's what a lot of this um, effort, uh, as Louise was mentioning, it is a 10-year plan. It is a plan that is not going to change things we're, that we're going to do next month, next year. It's going to be something for the future. And this is the, the original team partners. Uh, so if you're out there, Mr. Mayor, um, John Golick as well, Craig Turner, thank you so much for your continued support, Eloise, uh, Dr. Menzo, uh, Phyllis Murray, Boys and Girls Club, 
Mary Mashinsky, who's going to try to make it tonight, uh, but she's always been really behind this effort. Jim Ironimo at United Way, Lynn Ferry at Mid-State, and myself. Um, those were kind of the, the key uh, components of uh, 2009. Um, and we did a lot of work um, and took that kind of uh, effort and uh, we branded it as Activate Wallingford. Uh, we want active kids, we want healthy kids, um, which had the physical activity as well as the nutritional piece of that. The goal was to convene a high level representation of community leaders uh, to drive meaningful change. We traveled together, Washington DC, that was a, that was a nice uh, trip uh, for a coaches meeting, basically to teach us, uh, learn some strategies and methods. So a lot of us did already know that work, but this brought us together under the Robert Wood Johnson kind of umbrella. Uh, website social media presence was established, the Healthy Restaurant Guide was established as well, and we've created also a healthy walk um, that creates, uh, that kicks off uh, Celebrate Wallingford each year. And the, the goal was basically, uh, and I said, I think the results after uh, four or five years of this effort was it created overall heightened awareness. Um, there have always been some, a lot of programs and services out there, but this kind of was the hopes were to bring all of this together, and that's going to continue this work going forward. So now, uh, as Eloise was mentioning, the um, kind of the organizational chart of how this work is, is going to continue moving forward. These were the, the, uh, the core um, focus areas from the state uh, plan. And you see underneath them um, the different agencies that are a part of, the, of that right now. We hope that this slide goes beyond uh, Mr. Parisi's name tag right there uh, and just continues to expand in regards to more efforts brought to the table because it's a community-wide effort. Um, so basically we're taking a look at from the Pioneering Healthier Communities Initiative which really focused on youth obesity. Um, this is super size of it and no you can't get fries with that but um, this is basically taking um, the whole spectrum of health and creating a healthier community. So now priority areas, I'm going to call up a couple folks, some guest stars and audience. Uh, first one being Eloise to really talk to us a little bit about environmental risk and infectious disease. My one focus when we looked at environmental risk assessments was childhood lead poisoning. Um, and our target area is children that are less than six, and this is based on the statute, based on the regulation. And last year, 2014, in Wallingford, we had 27 children under the age of six who had some level of lead in their blood system. So we went by um, greater than five elevated blood leads by lab work. So that's a lot, a lot of kids, and we wanted to focus on that. So the state is saying they want to reduce that level by 5%. We took it and said, in Wallingford, we want to reduce it by 10%, which when you look at the whole numbers, it's not really a lot, but it is when you're look at the, looking at those kids. So our data source was from our DPH surveillance system and our lab data that we get. So what are we doing? We um, actually received a grant for enhanced case management to deal directly with the pediatricians, directly with the parents concerning the education as to what it means if a child has lead in their system. We're actually doing a, an enhanced outreach to our multifamily property owners in town for pre-78 housing. Um, a lot of times we don't think that we have an issue because, because we're Wallingford, and I get that, but uh, we have a lot of cases where people are doing home renovation and they don't realize that the potential is there for lead-based paint and so they accidentally poison their children because they don't think about lead. So we're trying to do an outreach to homeowners and then specifically to our multifamily homes in town. And we're gonna be doing some risk assessments um, and we're also gonna be hosting an RRP which is an EPA program um, by licensed providers. We're just gonna be the host site um, so that local contractors can take the course without having to travel around the state. Uh, I'm happy to represent the uh, Wallingford Board of Education, the, the school district, and even though I'm the head of maternal, infant, and child health, I just want you to know that the school district's involved in all the different areas um, also. We've been doing a wellness committee for many, many years, and so we've worked with the Y, we've worked with the coalition, we've worked with the town, and social services, but it's all these small separate pieces, and now it's like so exciting to have like a big official thing, and we're starting a Google Calendar, where we're all putting our um, different things on the calendar so that we're not doing them separately. Our goal is to decrease absenteeism. Obviously, that's gonna help with child health. Um, 
but it also helps in education because children that are in school learn better, are more successful, less likely to drop out of school. So, there, so it's a, a combination type thing. And we're looking to go 10% um, less. We're using last year's absentee as our base, baseline. And then next year's absenteeism will be, you know, see what our growth is. In the district, we have an absentee committee that came up with um, new policies on, on what to do if you have absenteeism and ways to um, help families or students that have a lot of um, absenteeism so that we can work with them to try to figure out what it is if it's just not, you know, to get to the bottom of it a little bit. But so we changed the policies. We have partners like the <coughs> committee, the nurses, staff. We actually hired a, a full-time um, um, charge of counseling to also help with that area. And we address this every other month at our uh, wellness committee meeting. Uh, from the one, just speaking from the YMCA's perspective, we've always kind of been known as Jim and Swim and early childhood development and whatnot for the many years. Um, and it wasn't until maybe seven years ago we really started getting into chronic disease. Starting with the youth obesity programs that we provide, we started uh, also uh, addressing cancer survivor uh, and their their hope, hopes and dreams of getting back into that um, exercise realm uh, after surgeries and medications and whatnot. And also just recently diabetes prevention program as well. For sneakers, uh, kicked it off maybe four or five years ago. We had maybe 200. We have an excess of 850 right now as far as silver sneakers, where their uh, their insurance plan covers their uh, their trip to the YMCA, which is great. Workplace wellness as far as corporate wellness, as well as uh, blood drives, etc. Uh, I'm going to introduce Shona Glidden, um, uh, Wallingford resident, and Alicia Dager. Uh, research associate from Yale who's uh, specializing in uh, marijuana and alcohol effects on the adolescent brain, a resident expert. What I want to talk about is uh, what drove the coalition to form and the things that we've been addressing since. It's no secret that uh, America's dealing with a severe substance abuse problem. Um, it's led to a number of changes already in our community and support systems that have been formed around that at virtually every level. It's kind of difficult for me to stand here and take credit for that because it's the community that's made that difference. The one thing that we've done is just created the awareness. And I think this whole program is reflective of that. Uh, Wallingford has an incredible ability to do the right thing when they're given the right information. And that's what this is about. A lot of initiatives that are already in place in a very short period of time include a hope and support group for families, um, a bereavement support group, uh, uh, a, we call it the Count Me In Club for teenagers. It's a support group system that's in place and, and being and growing almost daily. Uh, an incredible working relationship with everybody in this room um, and I don't say that lightly because we've been the bearers of some pretty bad news. Um, and I think we've already turned a corner on that by identifying sources of these problems that are going to affect a positive change. And they already are. I mean, we've got some numbers that say that uh, overdose transports are down, arrests are up, uh, deaths are down. It doesn't mean the problem's gone away, because it hasn't. Uh, it's just as bad as it was. We may be seeing a soft period, and we need to make fundamental changes in some of the systems, not only that uh, are running things like our school district and our town and some of the departments, but also in the family structures and the way that they're, they interact with each other. So that's where our focus is. That's being driven primarily by the survey and the results there. We're excited to get the next survey and see what changes are there, not only looking for uh, percentage changes in negative behaviors and high-risk behaviors, but also looking at the factors for those kids that are doing well, why are they doing well? So the new survey has been enhanced to try to dig down a little deeper and find that information. I gotta say that uh, that document is an incredible document and it's driving almost everything we do now and a lot of what the rest of the town is doing as well. Um, so it's a marvelous tool. Um, both of these folks have jumped in with both feet, and I gotta say, they're very representative of the type of support that we're seeing, um, which 
I would be remiss if I didn't give incredible accolades, especially to the town department that uh, provides backroom support and front room support for everything the coalition does, and that's Youth and Social Services, Craig Turner. I know that he's got the endorsement of the council, the mayor's office, um, and without that, in his bank of knowledge and experience, uh, this is a headless horse. We wouldn't be there. Yeah. I want to mention Marlene again. She's not here. She's not here because um, in, the, in a lot of the work that we've done in creating awareness, everybody's gotten busier. Uh, and I think they welcome that, but uh, we're stretching resources across the board. So that's our primary goal here is to find those resources and start implementing them while keeping track of what best practices might be applicable to some of the problems that we have to deal with. Um, but I did want to focus a little bit on increasing the number of MRC volunteers, so I'm giving a plug for MRC. MRC is a um, medical reserve corps, which are both uh, medical and non-medical members, citizen volunteer corps, who support the town in time of uh, emergency events. And so our goal is to increase our number of volunteers. It says 98, right now we're at 102, so we've already increased that but we really need somewhere in the area of 300 volunteers. So we have information on our website. We provide training, um, core training, um, including CPR first aid, mental health first aid, and ICS training. And um, we always have uh, the need for more volunteers. That's my plug for MRC. Jane Fisher. So I was really pleased that the public library was invited to have a place at the table in developing the WIP meetings and public sessions, help get information out to the general public and so we think that's what our role will be in the WIP and um, help that, hope that also the fact that we have information about all the other topic areas that are information that's really written for the lay, the layman and woman to understand and read um, in our collections and we have librarians available to help people understand that will help us support all the other areas as well. So. For clarification purposes, um, there's six categories as we refer to from the state Connected. A lot of those in Walling for Public School Systems, uh, for example, um, as well as many other organizations in town, are going to cross over uh, many of the different categories. Uh, what we're having for each of the categories is, is kind of a chair, a, a, lead, a uh, lead person that's going to convene those groups underneath it. Um, so they'll, they're not going to do the heavy lifting that, for that particular category, but they are going to convene those folks there. So uh, we are going to have some interlapping, and that's only, only natural. And uh, again, we're looking to get a lot of support and a lot more folks to the table and a lot more folks to those subcommittees. It's one of the tough things about um, Wellingford, but any other community as well, is the fact that there's a lot of great stuff going on in the communities, but it's almost siloed. And we have to bring all of those resources and all of those things to the table and make sure that people know about them. And that's a big uh, role that um, uh, Elise Piper, who is the, uh, the WIP liaison. So you'll be seeing more about uh, Elise, you'll be seeing more about uh, our liaison. She's gonna be doing a lot of the heavy lifting and bringing a lot of folks together, a lot of the administrative tasks, a lot of the research that goes into all of this as well. Uh, but her, she's going to be doing a big inventory check of really what programs and services we have out there because um, Jay may know about one thing, but Sal knows about two others, and together they could know about three. So community resources, youth and social services, there you go. Parks and Rec, the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, Health Department, WPA, Spanish Community, Wallingford. This came from, uh, from Sal Menzo. Policy, programming, and public will. Love it, uh, as far as the focal points, as far as all the work that we do. And where do you fit in? Like I mentioned, we need extra folks to the table. If you've got something that you're working on as an organization, and I you know, want to put it to shout out to the rest of the community, you'll get, you'll, they'll be getting more uh, information and also uh, some requests out there for uh, what are you doing out in the community in regards to healthing initiatives. Um, that's how you fit in, because we're going to give you even more support in regards to letting folks know about what you are doing. Because um, you're feeling, you're, there's a lot of folks that are not listed here that are doing great things, that are fulfilling a lot of the needs that we need to, and we can expand that, expand, expand capacity. Moving forward, we've got steering committees. The steering committee is basically made up of those six, our liaison, uh, Eloise and myself, and then full committee is everyone you saw on that chart. So that would be a big 
and then we're going to have those at the Hubcap, hopefully. Um, that one's in November, bringing everybody to the table. And then subcommittees, which we had one actually this morning, you know, uh, from one of the subcommittees. They're going to be determined on the schedules that they can in all the committees that are part of that, and all the organizations that are going to be a part of that. We're going to start with the data, and then the committees are going to bring a lot to the tables, and they're going to be working on a lot of things, and it's going to be uh, kind of organized at the steering committee level um, from, that, from that perspective. But it's also uh, good, to, and that's why we need to have as many organizations and agencies to the table, because um, that's we need to know. And data will get us so much. Uh, we also need to know the, uh, what's on the ground. And the sure. Each focus area has goals and objectives. Like for the instance, the one I, I drew out on lead. So every year, because I know where my baseline data is, every year I'm going to be able to see how many children the previous year were impacted. And so yes, I have a clear number at the end of the year. Hopefully my actions made a difference in the number of children. Hopefully that outreach prevented some children from being poisoned. Same with the aspect of the MRC. Hopefully in a year, instead of saying I have 102, I can say that I have 120 and 120 volunteers that are active, not just on my list. So yes, that's the whole plan behind this quarterly meeting, to keep the momentum going and to keep moving forward, moving that plan. Just as the mural is large, the plan is large, and we get that, but we want it to be large because everybody in this room has a different focus area. And people in our community clearly have different focus areas, but we need to get them together under that umbrella. Because it's not only, a, not only a strategic plan, but it's also an operating plan built into that. And it's going to be a living document and changing. Next October 2016, we're going to give an update. What happened in each of our focus areas? Where was their progress? Where was their change? Because perhaps something happened in our community along the way where we said, you know, this was our initial focus, but now we're changing. So it is a living document. And every time we get additional data, whether it be from the school health survey, whether it be from the state uh, health, uh, health outcome data, all of that is going to be used to say, where are we? And again, we're looking at the state data to compare ourselves to, to say, where are we overall? So yes, there will be updates, and it needs to be changed, and it needs to be updated. Every year, there needs to be an overall, what did we do in this focus area? And that's why those subcommittees and those action teams are so vital, because we can't do it alone. That's why we're here trying to get the word out. We need individuals who have a interest in whatever that focus is to be a part of that team to move it forward. Yes. Interest and expertise. Yeah, that expertise. It's definitely too big to be the flavor of the month, <laughs> so it's, de it's definitely going to be a living, breathing. We have a mural uh, that was actually done for Wall oh, Healthy Walling for 2020. Um, incorporation with WPA and maybe Susan I could call you up for a couple seconds to tell us tell everybody a little bit about the uh, mural because I wouldn't uh, do it justice. This mural is part of the idea that individuals need to take some ownership of their health and all of you know an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Every generation seems to know that so we're glad that we finally convinced the artist to do a rendering that would incorporate that concept. Originally, it was going to be a bee. Uh, save the bees, save your community was the original thought. But this is better because we believe that public art actually can help unite communities and involve individuals at a level that other things can. If you see an image around this town that reminds you that you're part of something bigger, that makes you feel good about your community. That was the goal. They see this, they affiliate it with the town, they affiliate it with something they can do, they affiliate it with being part of something bigger and ongoing, and they also affiliate it with the fact that if we aren't doing this for our children, then there's something that we're gonna lose in the end. So there's a lot of meaning in an image. Images can be invoke a lot of things, and our hope was that this will be displayed uh, throughout the community, throughout, until 2020, because it's made of durable, Good. durable stuff. My tie-in with, with, uh, with the mural that was presented is that it is very large, and we can't do it alone. We need a group of people to help us move this forward. And so when we look at our focus areas, yes, they are very large. They, are, they, are, they encumber a lot of elements within it. 
but each one of those focus areas has, has different priorities. And again, it's not something we made up. If you go back to the Healthy People 2020, there are clear goals and objectives, measurable outcomes. So each subcommittee under that focus area looks to that as the mother plan, so to speak, to say what is it that we feel is a priority for us. And so yes, there are already established goals and objectives that we tie on to. That's the, the beauty behind using the CDC plan and the state plan, is that we have a base to, to fall back on. And again, each subcommittee, based on their focus, everybody's different. So clearly, Board of Ed has different focus areas than, than say, I do focus on environmental health issues. But um, together, we can make it work. And when we put all of that together, and people are looking at it from different angles in that same focus group, um, we may be able to work collectively to get grant funds that we weren't able to get before for specific, maybe not um, programming or policies or things to, to make a long-term change. And that's the ultimate goal. We want to thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I know you guys are really busy as far as you probably have many different evening events and whatnot, but thank you for taking your time out of your important days and, and uh, hours uh, to be a part of us tonight.